employees stealing on hardcore pawn. Look what we just found. All this stuff from Christina's account that she had in her name that she pawned for high amount. That's not real. That's not bucks. real. That watch. That watch. Ooh. I hired her. I trained her. How long has this been going on? A year. And this is how I get paid back? She kept well, extensions. extending, she kept extending them. them. So extending they would never them. show up. She missed one. Yeah. Ashley enters Les's office to inform him that Christina, one of the shop employees, was stealing from the pawn shop for over a year. She used her power to trick the shop and Les was beyond upset. And then we'll have a little talk with Christina. Can't trust anybody, can you? Go get security. Then go get Ashley and Seth. Then bring me in Christina. You know why you're in here? Is that your merchandise? Yes, but I only did it when we were busy. Les wasn't going to let anyone abuse his trust like this, so he ordered Ashley to print out all of the evidence so they could confront Christina. When Les confronted Christina about it, she did admit that it was her merchandise, and Les was not happy. So that who's at the front or at the desk just never paid any attention to How much were you directed to loan on a watch like that? $40. And for you, you wrote it up for three dollars Yes. How much did you give a loan on for? How much would we normally give a loan on that for? So in other words, you wrote up a fake ticket and stole money from us. Please tell me the truth. Yeah. Yes. Christina would bring in fake items to the shop and give herself loans that were worth way more than they actually were. She wrote up fake tickets and stole money from the store for years. She finally admits that she did steal from the shop. How much money do you think you've stolen from American Jewelry? Would you say it's over $1,000? Yes. Sorry to bother you, but uh, I just busted another one of my employees stealing. Have you been working with any other employee? I don't know how much we've lost. If she couldn't have done this alone, she had to have an account. You pull that ace out of the hole, and I'll let you walk free. When asked how much money she stole, she claimed that she stole over $1,000 from the shop, and Seth wasted no time calling the police to report Christina. Something seemed a bit off, and Les knew that there was an accomplice. Walk out the door right now. Right, right now. now. I'm going to stop the bleeding. I'm going to stop it here, and I will open up that door. So you were just stealing from us all alone without any knowledge of anybody else stealing from us. Tell me something that's going to get you out of jail today. I don't know anybody that's stealing today. You're sure? Last chance, because once that door opens, I have no option. Les had a gut feeling that told him that there was no way Christina was able to pull this off on her own without someone else noticing. She promises Christina a free pass under the condition she states an accomplice, but she says nothing. Once that door opens, it's over. I want to help you, Christina. Okay. Sit across the How you doing, Les? I never would have expected it from Christina. I know. It's awful. You got that right. Les gave Christina multiple chances to speak up, but she just didn't say anything. And that's when the cops showed up to arrest Christina for her crimes. Christina has been working with the shop for over seven years, and seeing this was just terrible. Amy returns. Can I help you with anything? So I'm on the showroom floor. All of a sudden, I see our old jewelry salesperson, Amy. She quit two years ago. Is she back? What in the world is she doing back? To leave us high and dry like she did last time? It's not a charity case. She's a liability, and she makes mistakes when she writes up sales tickets. Future, something's gonna get up. Seth gets extremely concerned when he sees Amy back at the pawn shop. Amy was a former employee of the store, and after two years of silence, she suddenly makes her return to the pawn shop. Seth did not want Amy to come back. I'm willing to give her another chance. Guys are gonna come in, they're gonna see her personality, and they're gonna flock to her. It's okay. A ring for my wife. A ring for your wife? White gold or yellow gold? I'm gonna be watching her. I hope she doesn't up, but I know it's gonna happen. So you know who is back? Who? Amy. You're against it? I'm 100% against it. What kind of example are you setting? I mean, she averaged 10 to 15 sales a day. Les is a firm believer in second chances, so he was open to Amy returning to the pawn shop, but Seth wasn't on the same page and didn't trust Amy whatsoever. Les's main argument is that Amy's good looks would drive more sales. It's almost double what our regular salespeople do here. She knows how to screw up sales receipts. She brings in thousands of dollars. And Seth's gotta chill out. She's sloppy. You'll she say sells. it's same old. She it's the same old. In fine, money. that's fine. You can always change the band. This, this band needs to be changed. I can take 22,000. What'd you do? I don't care that she's selling a lot of merchandise. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Amy is pretty good looking, and she definitely got all the attention from the boys who come to the pawn shop. Even though she did bring in good sales, Seth still wasn't convinced and didn't think she was capable. What the f is this? I just sold a ring to this couple. I find a f ring 
inside the box. Brian, please come to layaway. Brian, please come to layaway. I sold that ring for 1800 so I went to give him a ring box. Reaches underneath the counter and grabs a ring box. No, this ring was sold today. Then they took home an extra empty box. Who sold it? After Les finishes making a big deal, he notices something off. As Les was going to get a ring box, he noticed that an extremely expensive piece of jewelry was inside of the box, and he had no idea how it got there. Les was going to get to the bottom of this. Amy did. She gave them an empty Amy box. Gave him, uh, yeah. Call Amy over here. Amy, please come to layaway. Did you put them in boxes? Yeah. Both of them? Yeah. What, what is, this is that the ring? This is the ring. Did you put them both in boxes? I put them both in boxes. He has one empty box. I wrapped them. He asked me to wrap them. Ashley was able to figure out that Amy was the one who made a deal for this ring, and she somehow accidentally gave a customer an empty box instead of the ring. This was a huge mistake, and you can tell Les was very disappointed in Amy. He asked me to wrap them. Okay, so that'll be a big surprise. That's, okay, fine. That would be it. No problem. Yes, All right. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Now this customer is going to take this ring that's wrapped, it takes a lifetime to build up a reputation, and a few seconds to destroy it. What are you freaking out about? We didn't lose any money. There's consequences for their actions, then who the f cares? And my dad needs to step up and give it to the employees sometimes. Surprisingly, Les didn't really get mad at Amy and let her off the hook with just a warning. This definitely did not sit well with Seth, who always had a bad feeling about Amy. He feels that the employees need to be more mindful of their work. Can we talk in your office? Let's go. It's simple. She f up, she needs to go. She ain't going. She needs to be fired already. She needs a slap on the wrist. She made a mistake. She made a mistake. She's entitled. When that girl walked out a year ago, our jewelry sales went down. She brings in customers. She increases sales. She'll cost us money. Just wait and see. But don't be surprised if I turn around and say I told you so. Seth expressed his frustration and wanted to get Amy fired. And while this would normally get any other employee fired, Amy really brings in sales, and Les wasn't going to let Amy go since she brought the shop so much more money. Breaking and entering. What the f is this? A laptop and two video games are missing. Rod! This door is open. There's a screwdriver laying next to it. Les, being the boss man that he is, is taking a look around the shop when he notices that the room they store laptops and computers in has been broken into. I go in the back and I see this screwdriver next to the laptop room. Caught Justin just the other day breaking into the laptop room. That's one reason why we keep a lock on the door. You didn't fire his ass that minute? I guarantee you Justin did that. Let's call his ass out. Rodney is the one who was supposed to be in charge of the room, so obviously Les is ready to give him a piece of his mind. But Rodney has another story to tell. I'm pulling all my warehouse employees. My staff should never steal. Randy is running this back. When we needed to get in that room, I didn't have the keys, and I guess the key wasn't even up front. Did you have permission to go in there no matter how you get in there? Do you? Les is now fuming with anger. He wants all of his employees to know that it's never okay to steal from the shop. And so, he calls all of them over for a conversation that quickly heats up as Les confronts the man who had been breaking into the laptop room. Are you the manager back here? Do we give you that right? White gave you the right. Did he give you the permission to go into my room? No. Tell me what makes it right. Did you steal anything? No, I would never steal anything. It's just to do my job. I'm waiting for 20 minutes and Roddy doesn't show up to get this laptop, so I'll just... No matter what the... Excuse it. And because of that, Justin, you're fired. I Les starts questioning Justin, and he has an explanation for everything. He claims that the only reason why he broke into the laptop storage room was because he needed to return a customer their item while Rodney was on break. I don't know if Justin did steal anything. Once trust is gone, you're gone. But I'm not stealing. I'm not a thief. The only man fires Justin without even giving him the chance to speak. But according to Les, he just doesn't trust the man anymore. Family brawl. Yeah. James just broke a PlayStation. I don't think it was on purpose. I want to call a family meeting. You know, always say everybody's replaceable. You Everybody, always say everybody's that. replaceable. And it's not okay. Well, they know it's not okay. No, they don't. They do. No, they don't. So I have an opinion. To me, an opinion is going against That's it. That's your view. Take a look at my views. Could be different. Ashley, Seth, and Les get into this heated argument after one of Les's employees was caught breaking a PlayStation red-handed. However, Les thinks that he definitely didn't do it on purpose. Les agrees with him while Ashley wants the employee to be fired. Tell you something. With employees, I think I've been right a lot of time. You're not a doormat, and if you want to be a doormat, by all means, go be a doormat. I understand both your opinions. But, but he is having a different view, and so you want to side with him. James screws up, 
It's Seth's ass. Thanks for calling me in for that. But as much as Ashley puts up her front, Les is with Seth on this one. Like Seth, he too thinks that James is good. Robbery at home. Were, were you on my desk at all? I wasn't. Because this ring was found on the floor and it was in one of the boxes on my desk. Sure, didn't drop it. I, I wouldn't. Mean Rings do not get up and walk off your desk. This employee walks into Les's office, asking him if he's been at his desk. When Les responds no, the employee tells him that there is a ring on his counter. Shouldn't have been on the floor. Yeah, okay. Somebody made a mistake. If you see anything, just let me know. I don't think there's anything to worry about. I'm sure someone was careless. It happens. But guess what? Les doesn't really think too much of it. He believes that this was an honest accident. <laughs> kidding me? I did. I set out the watch. Yeah, hey. Jeff. Yeah. Well, now I found all this on the floor. Are you me? I am what? not. Pull up the video. The hell is this? The footage isn't there. Later in the day, the same employee finds another piece of jewelry lying on the floor by his desk, and now he knows that this is not a coincidence. So he once again goes up to Les, and Seth is with him this time around. Rick, um, I just pulled up the security cameras on my computer. All right, yeah. What does that mean? I'm not really sure what's happening. All right, rush on it. Let me know when it's up. Yep. He doesn't know how long it's going to take to get fixed. I got an idea. I think I can, can set him up and set some jewelry up in a certain order. At least we'll know whether or not somebody's actually stealing it. We'll do it tonight before you leave. All right. Nobody is to know. Les calls up Rick to ask him what's going on and whether or not this can be fixed. But even he doesn't know when this is going to be fixed. And the problem is, Les wants to find out who's stealing from his store right this second. It's gone. The ring is gone. The ring is gone. What are you talking about? We had a thief. Jeff said a diamond in a white gold ring. And this morning my visor was moved and the ring is gone. Hey Rick, how are we doing on the video? Sure enough, the next day the jewelry is gone, which means that someone is definitely stealing from the shop. And that's when Les knows it's time to call the cops and make sure that whoever is doing this is punished for their crimes. Hey guys, cameras are fixed. Don't just take me a second to load this up. No, it can't be Brian. Doing? He's looking, looking around. At Hold on a second. Joe. <gasps> After a false lead, they finally see the culprit on the screen. And it's safe to say that no one could have ever seen this one coming. The man on the screen is none other than their head of security, Joe. You realize that the lost footage now makes a lot of sense. Oh my God. Joe, he's been with me for over three years. He's the last person I would have ever thought. Let me pull up the previous day. Hold on, another day. Oh yeah. my God. We found that he was stealing from us day after day. But for right now, it's business as usual. Just to keep cool. Now, if this was a one-time thing, maybe Les wouldn't have gone so hard on Joe. But because he's been doing this for a while, the old man has no mercy in him for the liar. Les will do anything to teach Joe a lesson at this point. I see Joe walk in the store. We show our hand to Joe, he's gonna bolt like a son of a bitch. Yeah, hi, this is Les Gold. I have an employee theft as soon as you can. Thank you. When Joe walks into the store, the situation is tense. But Les has a bigger plan in mind. He wants to get Joe arrested for his betrayal. Hey guys. Okay, I gotta go. We'll uh, come back here. The detectives have arrived. So just keep your eyes on the front door. Okay. Joe has no idea we're onto him. We have to keep him occupied so he'll stay in the store. Hey Joe, I gotta ask you a question. You're the only one who would know this answer. The detectives arrive on the spot, but they need to make sure the man in the footage is Joe. And of course, Joe has no idea what's coming to him as he waits outside the door, thinking he's really guarding it. Les comes out and brings Joe in to teach him the lesson of a lifetime. Joe, did you steal from me? Tell me the truth. He said, yes, I did. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out jewelry. I almost had a heart attack. You go this way. My head of security, the guy that I trusted. Get a whole pocket full of ours, just now too. And it looked like Joe already knew he was in trouble because he had no trouble admitting to his crime. And it's safe to say that watching him getting arrested isn't easy on the Golds, who have always thought of him as family. The aftermath. I can see on everyone's face, they don't know what to think. Joe, my head of security, stole thousands of dollars worth of diamonds and figure out how to move forward. What are we gonna do about this? This kind of happens. You're saying it's gonna happen. No, we don't know if Joe is working alone. Our employees need to know that we're not gonna tolerate this. Fine. Mandatory storm meeting on the showroom floor. 
The shop and the staff are heartbroken as they realize their head of security, Joe, stole from them. To prevent this from ever happening again, Seth calls in a meeting with all the employees to add some new rules and regulations. What's going on? That's crazy. Can you believe it? I still can't believe this happened, but I guess this is what has to be done. With Joe, it's a sad day at American Jewelry and Loan. Joe was our head of security for the last three years. He stole from us. He's going to be in jail. As of today, Byron is now head of security. Les was beyond hurt that someone he trusted with his life would betray him like that. He informs his employees that there will be new rules in place to prevent such events from happening ever again. And everyone is on edge. There will be some new rules implemented. Jeff's desk is not accessible to anyone but Brian, me, and Jeff. This is ridiculous. Jeff's desk is right in the middle of everything. Every evening, your bags will be checked on the way out. This is a bunch of boy they're subject to search. And we'll be instituting other measures as well. Les and Seth were not playing around, and they prohibited nearly every employee from going near Jeff's desk, where the items were stolen from. Les and Seth took things way too far when they announced that they would check every employee's bag. All right, that's it. Thank you, guys. What, you what the hell are these about? other measures, Seth? We'll talk about it later. Seth needs to understand, the last thing we need right now is to be treating them like criminals. That bag check system might not be such a good idea. We are going to Seth? go through Seth? our employees' bags. Seth? We're already watching the security footage. I don't have enough time my day to sit back here. All the employees were rightfully frustrated by these new rules as they were unfair, and Seth was treating his employees like criminals. Later in the day, Les and Ashley try to talk some sense into Seth, but Seth is adamant on the new policies. Joe beat us, so that's why I don't want to trust anybody. Are you me searching their pockets? That's exactly the plan. Joe walked out with gold in his pocket. A body search would have definitely stopped him. Joe was stealing from us for a month straight. I draw the line on body searches. Seth just didn't trust anybody and wanted to do everything in his power to prevent another situation like Joe. Seth truly crossed the line when he stated that he wanted to do full body searches on his employees, which was just way too excessive. All employees to the back office upon punching out tonight. In jail in here. All right, everyone, line up for bag checks. Show me your bag. Hold on, man. You dropping stuff out of here. Frisker. For what? You seriously went through with this? What is going on? Even though Les and Ashley did not give Seth their approval to go through with these excessive measures, Seth still went ahead and attempted to do a full body search. This was just insane, and Seth was confronted by Les and Ashley. Excuse me. No, I don't. Thanks, what's up? Good night. Seth. Good move, Seth. Search my baby. Bullshit. Just utterly, utterly bullshit. I gotta get my bag checked in. I'm gonna quit working here. All Seth did was make a bad situation worse. Seth just alienated his own staff, and respect must be given to them for not going along with these ridiculous policies. Seth made a terrible situation much worse by these decisions. And you tell that even Bobby J and Rich were very disappointed. Rich vs. Seth. Rich is letting Gold walk out the door. If I let any other employees get away with it, I'll be He's the manager. There should be no Rich has to be fired. What? what? Yeah. Are you what, kidding me? What kind me? of message is that sending? I understand the Give song and dance you want to play, but you're talking about Rich. He's not somebody on the sales floor. He runs the store. Over the course of the day, Rich has been messing up big time, from ruining deals to letting valuable items unattended on the shop floor. Les wasn't going to allow any of his employees to cause such trouble, so Les confronted him. He walks around here thinking that he owns the place. He's dropping the ball, not I being in layaway. Can't. He's been with us 25 years. You're just pissed off right Why now. Fine, but if he up again, He's out of here. Son of a bitch. Where the hell is he? He's on the floor. He's not there. We're losing money. I've had Rich's back since the first day he came here. Les felt like Rich was being entitled and felt like he could do whatever he wanted since he has been a loyal employee of the shop for over 20 years. Les wanted to fire Rich, which was a bit too excessive, but eventually Les confronted Rich. I just have an employee meeting. Tell everybody that they need to step up on their game. I'm looking for you in layaway. Where the hell are you? I gotta sit in layaway all day long. The next person that f up is gonna be fired. Compared to what I've done for you for 25 freaking years, Les, I have been the here next person for you ever. I've been more loyal than your own kids have to you. 